Greetings and welcome back to Factorio. I'm Catherine of Sky and I'm so excited for 1.0. Factorio is literally my favorite game in the entire world and I just I'm so excited to get back to this. Huge huge thank you to all of my patrons and supporters. You guys are so amazing especially when I haven't been able to play. I really appreciate you sticking by me all this time. Um, if you're new here I, I have migraines 24 7 and I also have a really severe neuropathy in my hands. So we're probably not going to have a daily series because I really need to rest a lot but you will have a series and I'm going to upload when I can. Just don't panic uh, if there's a couple of days between episodes. So what is the title about? Entry level to mega base. Entry level. This is for beginners. Um, if you are new to the game, we're going to talk about all kinds of tips and tricks and builds and things that you can do, things that you may have no clue about, um, but hopefully something to help you improve your game and gaming experience with this game. Um, the two mega base is also for expert players. Uh, hopefully we're going to have something exciting for you as well. We're going to do some circuity stuff, advanced train systems, all kinds of things. Um, and that's going to be a lot of fun. And then the other goal is to how to transition from a regular factory to a mega base. And we're going to be going with that goal in mind. So uh, let's firstly talk about mods. Uh, I do have a few mods, but there is nothing game changing, um, except maybe one of them. We'll see. Uh, Afraid of the Dark is just for YouTube. It puts a little glow around the character. Otherwise, it's really, really dark and people can't see things on YouTube. Base mod is the game. Factorio's standard library is just dependencies that other mods rely on. It doesn't do actually anything doesn't actually do anything in the game. FNEI is a way to look up recipes, uh, what the components of a recipe are and what, um, if you pick one thing, what it's used in. Um, and that's quite important uh, as a tool, especially for really complicated mod packs. I normally don't use it with vanilla, but for beginners, I just want to show you this tool because it's really handy. Nanobots. Uh, this is a thing that kind of changes the game. A lot of people would argue with that. But what it is, is that you get these robots that are consumable. You have to pay for them, um, but it reduces clicks for me. It's really, really helpful for my neuropathy. So um, I'm going to use this. Be, be aware that you don't have to use anything that I have here. I have played this game vanilla 600 hours before I ever went modded. So uh, be, be sure that you can do everything without any of these mods. All right, to-do list is a way to keep track of our progress as we're uh, doing things and hopefully not forget by the next episode. So that's quite useful. Doesn't change the game at all. Okay, we're going to start a new single player game. There we go. And we're going to go into free play mode. Now I have chosen a map. So we're going to get this map here. The map exchange string is found in my Google Drive. There's a link to it in the description below. Now, um, I started off here with a preset called Rail World. And what that does is move the ore patches, make them much more infrequent, make them bigger in size, so area. Uh, and the richness is about the same as normal. Now, the terrain I haven't changed at all. So we're having water trees, cliffs. Yes, we're having cliffs. It's going to be fun, I promise. <clears throat> Enemies. The only enemy thing I changed is I moved the starting area size up to 200%. Uh, That's so we get a little bit extra breathing room in the beginning, but everything else is the same. Uh, enemy expansion is by default off on a real world preset because I don't want the enemies to go and make new camps because it's annoying. Um, advanced information. We're doing regular recipes. Research queue availability. I put this always on. Uh, by default, it's after the game is finished, but I feel like there are some things that, you know, like insert or stack bonuses that we can just queue a couple up. Otherwise, I am going to talk about research as we go along. So let's preview this map and talk about why I chose this specific map. So whenever you get the map up, your start area is always in the center. And usually it's marked by tiny little patches of stuff. So we have tiny patch of iron, copper, and coal over here. And there's a tiny bit of stone here as well. Uh, outside of that is where you get your bigger patches. Now, if you're new to the game, I highly recommend that you get a defensible position like this. Notice we have 
Um, this is actually, that is disconnected. Yep, there's only two biter bases up here, so we only have to defend our factory from one side, which is great. Or, well, an extended big side. <laughs> but not all 360 degrees of sides. Uh, another important consideration is oil. We have oil down here. That's nice to kind of know where it is. Um, because a lot of people just like, oh my god, where's oil on? Oh, I don't know. Um, but otherwise, you see how far apart the patches are. They are quite, um, you know, way, way out there. We have, you know, one iron here, another over there, and then one is way out there. Uh, but I like having a real world because I love building railroads. So anyway, this is what our map looks like and we're going to get started. So let's prepare for the launch of 1.0. Oh dear. We launched and then we crashed. This is inconvenient. Yeah, it happens. So yeah, our ship is down. This this is not convenient for us. We uh, were kind of here. This is Factorio Freeplay. Your task is to launch a rocket into space. You will need to research advanced technologies in order to unlock a rocket silo. Start small, work your way up with automation, and don't forget to protect yourself from the natives. Yes, we will do that. All right, so first things first. Um, they change things so that when we look in our inventory, we only have a minimal amount of stuff. There are some iron plates around here, and we're going to get to that. But let's look at settings first. We're going to go to interface. And I want to change my active quick bars to four. People keep asking me what mod I'm using. This is vanilla. Uh, all the quick bars, you can have up to four quick bars visible at one time. There is a total of 10. Um, another thing that I like to have is these settings on alt mode. Pump arrows, mining drill arrows, combinator settings. Very important combinator settings. And then show beacon modules. Yes, please. Uh, all right, and so this is kind of what I like as my settings, and I think I think we're good. All right, so let's get going. So we're going to click on this. These are basically chests. We have some ammo. That's great. So we have our, our gun, and we have some tiny bits here and there. Just kind of mouse over, and you can see the little squares where they're kind of like chests. Let's see. Go down here. No, nothing. This one, yes. So... There we go. And we're just harvesting this random stuff. Okay, nope. Let's go here. All right, harvested. We're good. And the ship is still on fire. We're going to try not to uh, get into that. Firstly, we have a couple of rocks here I want to get. You can see in the upper right corner there, expected resources. These have coal. Coal rocks are awesome. They're usually the bigger ones that you see. Uh, in specific, like this one only has uh, stone. We'll go ahead and mine it anyway. But the important thing about coal rocks is you can spend ages digging in a mine. Or you can just get a couple of coal rocks and all of a sudden I'm up fi uh, 50 coal. Look at that. Isn't that great? So yeah, we have coal. I'm going to put that there for fueling. It's much easier. So we're going to go down here and we got to get some iron going first. Let's see. Is this a coal rock? No, it is not. Coal? Yes, this is a coal rock. All right. Coal rocks are so nice. Okay, nice. And we're also getting stone with this. That's quite important. One of the things I didn't talk about is the tree coverage, which we're now suffering under. Um, but trees help absorb pollution. So they're actually kind of good. So we're going to go ahead and put a miner here. And then get a thingy there. So we're going to... We're going to control right click to put a half a stack of coal in each of these machines. So we need to get some more furnaces. So that's what all this stone is for. We're going to go ahead and go here. We can right click to, to craft five at a time, left click to craft one at a time, or you can do shift click to craft all the ones you can with the materials that you have. It's quite handy. Um, we need some more iron plates uh, to make gear wheels. And we're missing some. So let's see if we've gotten some. Yes, we do have lots. So we're going to go ahead and make one of these. It automatically crafts the gears that we need for that. So that's really handy. All right, you go here. All right. And again, half a stack and half. Well, actually, we'll put the whole thing in there. So it goes on for a little bit longer. All right, looking really good. So we're gonna just gonna grab these. We have 15, we'll make one more. We wanna make two more drills and that's so that we can have a constant coal supply. 
Okay, there we go. And we can walk as we're crafting. Okay, so there's our patch of uh, stone, which is nice. Coal's a tiny bit far away, but, you know, if you're playing on your own, it really doesn't matter. It matters on YouTube because it takes me a while to walk over there. <laughs> Oh no, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any coal to kickstart it. That's annoying. Okay, um, do I have a, let's see, is this a coal rock? Ah, oh, it's a coal rock, hooray. You can either grab another coal rock, or if you're unlucky enough not to have any coal rocks, uh, you can grab the trees here, the dead trees. Those are kind of handy because, uh, you can use them to kickstart one of these machines, or you can make them into power poles, which we're going to need also. All right, so another thing you can do if you don't want to put half in, and I don't want to do that. Now, notice the way the drills are pointed. Let's just, this one is pointed down, and I'm pressing Q to get a copy of this. It's like a pipette tool in a graphics program. And then I'm going to switch it around so it feeds into the other one. So these coal things are going to feed into them themselves. We only want to kickstart them, so hold the coal and press Z or Z, depending on your proclivities. And that way, they're going to start feeding into the other um, coal thingy majingy. So you see this one is getting two because this one is transferring it into the other one. And if you wanna harvest the coal from these guys, you press control click to harvest the whole thing and you get more coal in your inventory. So that's a pretty handy way to start a little coal, um, coal gathering operation. We gotta go get our iron plates though. So we can make more. Now, there are things, uh, if you press M to go into map mode, we're gonna see that we have pollution is starting to happen. So we're gonna try to get some research going and uh, get some turrets, because at the moment, all we have is a pistol. I don't think we can make anything else. No, that's it, okay. Uh, all right, so let's get more. We now have 63 iron plates. This is fantastic. So I think what I wanna do is we want to make, actually make two more of these. And we're going to put down our furnaces as well. Let's put these furnaces here. Just random spot on the hot bar. It doesn't matter. We're just click dragging. Oopsies. I was just shift clicking and that was the wrong thing to do. There we go. Did it again. Uh, now these I'm going to put half and half. There we go. And take the iron plates as I'm going along here. All right, um, another, the next thing we're gonna need to do is build a lab and get some science going. That's gonna be important, but we need copper for that because it needs electronic circuits. So if we look at FNEI, this is a good uh, opportunity for this. So we're gonna select an item. How do we make electronic circuits? So crafting them, ooh, we need iron plates and three copper cables to make one electronic circuit and it takes half a second to make one. So that means we're gonna need some of this copper. You can actually go down that entire list. If you look at, yeah, there we go, craft uh, circuits, and then, oh my gosh, how do I make copper cable? Ah, we make it from copper plate in one of these machines. And of course you can also hand craft it. Okay, let's go get some more fuel. Oh wait, let's make um, two more of these. Actually, let's make all of these. That sounds better. We're gonna make them all, yes. Now these guys, if you want to make a whole chain of them, which we're going to do, uh, you can, you don't have to, you can turn them, like press R to rotate them, but you can also just go like this. Whoopsie, there we go, and go like this, and have like a, a chain going all around. So I'm just going to grab those, oopsies, and then I'm going to Z and get all of these guys working. There we go. They would have started themselves, but I just want them all going, 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 go, go, go. You know, fast. Do the thing, fast. Okay. And then we're going to get our copper going as well. Okay. And... Okay, I want to take half of this and kind of put that better. Okay, there we go. Okay. So, we just need to get a little bit more iron. And we're getting the copper going. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Go, go, yay. There we go, nice. So now we're getting a ton of iron plates. We can actually do some of this. Uh, let's make these into stone furnaces. And we will now, we need to make a lab. So let's, we need 15 iron plates for that, or copper plates, I should say, right there. It says at the bottom, total raw, 15 plates. So yeah, we have it. 
we have 20. Excellent. Okay, lab is coming. Lab needs a lot of ingredients, which are gonna, we're going to handcraft each of these pieces. And as it's handcrafting, they're not going to appear in our inventory because they're already spoken for by the lab, which is a nice way of uh, Factorio kind of like minimizing the use of inventory space, that kind of thing. And immediately, you see, we're getting so much more coal. Right, let's see, can I make... We'll make two more of these drills. And then we're going to make... Um, a boiler and two steam engines for our power situation. Oh, oh, trees, help. I'm not getting rid of any of the trees. You can right click them to delete them. Like maybe I should do some of them. But uh, in general, they suck up pollution a bit. So they're kind of good to have around, especially since there are biters on the horizon somewhere. Okay, there we go. That's okay now. Whoopsies. Excuse me. There we go. Better. But soon we're going to have nanobots to clear those for us. And that helps me out a great deal. So my hands don't have to hurt. Um, all right. There we go. And we're going to make two more iron miners here. Oh, whoops. And I just used all my... What we can do is... No. No. None of them have enough coal. No. Uh, let's see. How about you? Yes. No. 22. Sure. Yeah. We'll just do that. It's fine. It'll be fine. Uh, and then we can also get a miner uh, working into a box. But I want to use electric miners for the stone. It's easier. All right, take these. Now, we have our um, ratio of uh, boilers and steam engines, which is great. And we're going to need some coal for that. So... We need to get a, probably an electric miner, I think, because a, a, a regular burner miner is really hard to keep fueled unless you have a little inserter and all this kind of stuff. But we're going to try to get past that kind of noob stage of the game and not worry about burner inserters mostly. Okay, so we have a few bits of wood. We have 63 bits of wood. Thank goodness we actually chopped that forest. It gives us... Um, power poles which are nice so let's make a few power poles all right so when we're making our power column i think let's see do we, we could put it over this direction maybe i'm thinking this direction because we might have smelting over or maybe smelting over there and power here sure let's do it that way okay um we're gonna have a belt of uh material coming up this way probably should make a few belts just to have them handy just put those at the end of this queue instead. Um, and then we'll put down our... Oops. Okay, first thing we want to have here is belts. Then we want to have undergroundies. And then we're going to have splitters. Excellent. And then power poles. I want to put those like here-ish. Sure, that sounds fine. And then we'll put our labs somewhere, but not yet. So... I'm thinking coal is going to come up like this way, maybe? Like there? Or maybe maybe it should be here. I think it should be there. And we're going to need some underground, under, under flowies, under pipe thingies. Um, and one more thing, of course, is getting the water out of the ground. So offshore pump for that one. Let me just uh, remove that one real quick and put those, again, the pipes at the end of this queue. Okay, very good. Okay, we have... no. So the components of a power system are as such. We have a boiler, which I think will go here. Let's first put our offshore pump because I want it to be in line. There we go. So we're going to move this down a tiny bit. Now, if you look at this thing, you see it has a water symbol and an arrow. This arrow indicates where the water is coming out of. Now, we're going to look at our boiler, which I guess I can put over here. Um, it also has symbols. Now, you see there's two water sections on the left and right, and then above there's a steam section. You can hardly see the little cloud, but it's there. Uh, and that one goes up at the moment. So we're going to get this little guy and put it, say, I don't know, there or so. Now, the water connects to the water, and steam connects to the steam engines. So I want to get my pipes out. Those go here. And when I say those go here, this is just my standard layout that I like. 
um, where I want to put things. You can put them anywhere you want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I just put them where it's convenient usually. Okay, and so this is already has water in it, but it uh, doesn't have any fuel. We need to have fuel to make this burn and therefore um, get the steam output here. So we've got to heat up that water. I think, do we want to do a, yeah, I think we'll do pipes in between. So that's fine. So we'll have our, our power lines going down this way approximately. And then we'll go ahead and fill this with 50 coal right now. So what this is going to do is it creates steam, which goes into the steam engines. Now the steam engines don't actually work unless we're using that steam and we're not, where there's nothing that's working. So the boiler immediately shuts off um, and it's done. But we do have that stored electricity within these steam engines. Uh, and the first thing we're going to want to put down here is our lab. So this is just temporary location for this lab. Um, and the lab, as you can see, needs science packs to function. So let's press T. That's up here, T to start new research. And what we're going to do is get technology to automate our life. So we want this assembling machine one. That is like the most important thing that you can start with. So we're going to start research with this. Now, the way the research works is you need the science packs listed up here in order to work the research. So we have uh, 10 science packs one, which is the automation science pack. It's the red one. Um, and that the 10 is over here. This is 10 seconds to process each of them. So it's going to take a total of 100 seconds to process this science. You can have multiple labs, but they all have to have the same amount of science. So for example, if we look at, say, oil processing, you have to have red and green within the same lab. They take 30 seconds to process and you need 100 times that amount. So you need 100 red, 100 green and 30 seconds per each. Uh, all right, so we're going to feed this. I think it was 10 science packs. Was that right? Oh my God, I've completely forgotten. But we're going to go ahead and make those in our inventory for now. Uh, I would like to get some coal up here, but man, that is a long way to travel. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to drag these power poles down that way. Uh, if you click on the one you already have and hold click and then walk, they automatically place themselves at max distance. It's quite handy. So you don't have to worry about like click, click, click. You just hold and it's good. So we're going to have our power poles, I think, over here. And we're going to get electric miners. But we don't actually have enough uh, iron for that. So we're going to go and make some. I think all of our... Um, oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, let's just get half a stack each there. We grabbed the copper real quick. I love that control click. It's so useful. And we have no more science facts available, alas, but we have crafted six, so that's quite cool. These, a lot of them have stopped because no fuel. All right, there we go. And run down and take all of these. Now, if you're in a multiplayer situation, what you can do is control right click, and that takes half a stack, which is very nice, or half of whatever's in there, not necessarily a stack. So we're gonna make one, two, three, four more of these. Now we do, do we have inserters? Yeah, we do have inserters. That's great. Also keep in mind that this ship, um, this is going to be a monument to our legacy here on Novice. Um, you can mine this away, but you can't replace it. So I'm going to keep ours. I think it's cool. Now then, I do want to get some more belts going on. I'm going to make a belt making. Oh, wait, let's go and do the research first. That's kind of important. We can also make another lab. Maybe a couple more labs. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. I'm going to put labs on our little hot bar temporarily. Like we won't want them here all the time. So to choose an item that you don't have in your inventory, just middle click this and you can choose one. Or you can, uh, as we did before, you can drag something on here. Now you wouldn't want science packs generally. Um, so you would middle click that to take it off. Uh, okay, so let's see. 
it, is alt mode on? No, we need to turn on alt mode. Oh my God, how could I forget? That's this button here in your uh, hot bar thingy uh, or quick bar. I forget which one is which. Um, and this one shows us that it is should be functioning. Is this working? Oh no, we didn't start our research. Oh no. Okay, I didn't say start research. Whoops. All right, so yeah, we're gonna start the research here for automation. And we also have two more labs. Now I'm gonna put these... In a particular order doesn't really matter but this is for a, a build we're gonna do in a second so I know it looks strange but I promise it's not as weird as it looks okay there we go and so what I've done there is I've controlled control right click again to put like half a stack in each of them and we should get that done very quickly as you see yep there we go here you can get that one done Almost ready. Automation. Are you coming? Hello. Yeah, we're doing good. Meanwhile, this conveyor belt can start to happen over here. Oops, that's not a good spot at all. No. Okay, well, it'll be fine. We'll figure it out. All right, so automation is done. Now, the next thing we can do, we can get optics, but I think that's kind of later. Uh, lights are not strictly needed. Um but logistics is very much needed. That's the second research I always do. We are going to have to start thinking about military, like the SMG is really good. But I want to get logistics ready first. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, now I want to make a few assembling machines. So let's just right click and make five. And then we'll just make a few inserters as well. We're doing really good on materials, I should say. Uh, wait, how many coal was in there? 43. Okay, so we have tons of coal in there. We're going to pick up some more to fuel our furnaces again. Because I want to get red science automated before the episode is up. But we're right on pace for that, so that is no problem at all. There we go. Let's take these. Copper. We have materials. Hooray. Now then, um, what else do we want to do? I think we probably need more belts. We need a lot of belts. Gonna need a ton of belts. That's one of the first things we want to make is a belt making factory, actually. Making belts and making gears. Okay, so let's just take these. Oopsies. I clicked the wrong button. Nice. Make sure I got all that. Good, good. Very good. No, no. Come on, come on. Go. Actually, we can make some of that down here. If we want to. Um, this is a bit far away, but I think it will work. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to make it up there. I, I'm not going to make it down here. You can put the um, assembling machines and stuff right next to the furnaces like an early game. But I feel like it's better to move the pollution up here instead. I think it's a better idea. So let's go and put our assembling machines in this general area have a few so let's put our assembly machines on our hot bar really important resource um okay this is gonna be for science that's gonna be for science and then we'll have one we need to have a couple there make another five all right but we need to get some iron chests. So we'll make a few of those. Let's just cancel the assembling machines and make those first. And then maybe a few more inserters. And I think we're good on power poles. Yeah, I think this is going to be great. Oh, this is so good. This is a good start, I feel. Now that I completely forgot what I canceled. I think it was the assembling machines. Yeah. All right. So first order of business, I really want to make some transport belts. Really important. Um, let's make those in this box or in this uh, assembly machine. These require iron gear wheels and iron plates. So the usual setup I use for that is to put two boxes between. And then both um, machines are going to share these boxes. Let's get our inserters as well on the hot bar. So we're going to have one box with plates and that's going to be this one. And both of them are going to take from this box. Okay, and then the other one is going to be, wait, do we have red inserters? Oh, we do. How nice. We're going to make one of those too. Uh, and then this box is going to be for belts. 
And actually, I probably need to have another box down here instead. There. Yep, like this. Okay, because these are made two at a time, as you can see at the very top there. So we need two to take out because one inserter is too slow. So what's going to happen is this inserter is going to take belt out and put it on the ground. And this one's going to put it in the box. And this one is also going to put it in the box. Let's just take these and connect it. There we go. Leaving room for our transport belt to go through. Okay, and these are gears. And we're going to do something called direct feeding. So let's put this long-handed inserter and you see the long-handed inserter can span this entire gap like if you compare it to this one if you notice where the bar and the arrow are uh, it's this much shorter distance and that just even if this was powered it would not work because it's just too short but the long-handed has a longer arm and it can go and direct feed the gears right to this uh, machine here so we're just gonna i don't know let's have two one row of uh, conveyor belts. Yay. All right. So this is already saving us time because we don't have to handcraft this. Uh, now these are going to be a little bit different story. Do we have enough stuff? Maybe. Okay. Let's see. These are going to be red science. So red science needs copper plates and iron gear wheels. Okay. So to copy from one machine to another, you can shift right click and then shift left click to paste. So right click to shift, right click to copy and shift left click to paste. Um, and these guys, we're going to get our science going on. I put these on the wrong side. Uh, oh, whoops. I did. They were on the right side. I just, I just messed it up. It's fine though. It's fine. All right. And then we'll put this here. Try to maximize our power pull usage. And then we'll have one in the middle. Now, this one, guess what this is going to be? Gears. So this gear machine is going to make enough gears for these two approximately. And then we're going to do a sneaky setup here once I get the materials. So let's go and get some materials real quick. This has already run out of um, material. We want to grab our copper as well as the iron. The copper's over here, but we'll just... We're kind of on our way to this iron anyway. Oh, oh, trees, help, help. I thought about getting squeak through, which is another nice mod, but I thought, oh, I want to just reduce the mods as much as possible. So, yeah. Anyway, there we go. And let's go. Now, keep in mind that you can craft um, red science during this period if you want to. I've just thought about uh, automating the entire thing before uh, I get to there. Just kind of doing a really step-by-step -step approach to this. Now, we might want to feed that, that boiler some more coal, depending on its uh, load there. It's got 41. That's plenty, actually. So here, let's go ahead and set up the last couple of boxes. So this is kind of a neat arrangement, where this box is going to have iron and copper. Now, if we look at these guys, we can see the ratio for this two iron to one copper so that's what i'm going to put in the rate in the box here so two iron and one copper uh we don't have quite that correct ratio for this box but it's okay it's fine so the copper is going to go up there and the iron is going to go into the gear machine so they're going to share let's just rearrange these power poles a tiny bit there we go now these are going to make red science and they are already functioning. Look at this. Hey, hey, it's going well. And then those are going to get automatically put into these labs. Uh, you can do a different thing with labs, actually, is you can take them like this. Instead of doing that, you can daisy chain them if you want. I don't typically like to daisy chain, but it is an option that you can use. So um, those things will just get passed on as they go along. And um, it looks like I think one of the another priority that we might think about is getting the coal here uh, as soon as we can. So let's go ahead and put in. Oh, no, no. Wrong place. Wrong space. No. From this one. This one. There we go. You know what? I think I missed that iron in there. I think I missed some and we I put the wrong ratio in there. It's OK, though. No worries. Um, and I think I also want to research optics when we can get to it as well. 
All right, but here we go. Let's go and feed our machines one more time. And we're also are going to start um, creating, where is it? Oh yes, there they are, electric mining drills. Yes, we have insufficient iron for that. But that is our next goal, is to get a mining drill on the coal so that we can feed our power plant automatically. So let's just go ahead and make, we can make 10 of them, how nice. <laughs> we might need, let's just make uh, five. At the moment, we're not going to need many electric mining drills. We need very few, in fact. Let me just see how this belt needs to go. So probably up this way. Let's start placing this belt down. I thought it was down further, but I don't want to interact with our spacecraft. So there we go. All right, so how do we want to place these guys? So we're done with burner miners. We're completely done with those. We can take those off the hotbar. Um, all right, so let's put these here. I think for now, we probably just need a couple of them, but I'll just put like six. Now, the, the funny thing about mining drills is they do cover a five by five area if you look at the AOE. So the, the drills are three by three, but there's the green square five by five around them. The reason I put them close by is because I want greater throughput rather than um, just, you know, spacing them apart. I really want more coal so that I can reclaim this land and build stuff here. Um, if I need more, um, more coal, I can always go out into the world and just go and find another patch. Okay, so let's connect these guys. And this is automated coal filling. This is fantastic. Okay. All right. Nice. And I really like the new, the new, new design. Um, because you can see the, the, um, the coal going on the belt. Nothing is blocked. It's really easy to see if you have coal working or not. And, um, I think I want one more of these guys. Just, we have even, it doesn't matter if it's even actually, uh, but I, <laughs> It's fun to make it even sometimes. Uh, nanobots is a big priority for me, like I said, because of my hands. And um, But we're going to get that so we can get stuff made quickly. Now, we did not finish connecting this, so let's go ahead and go there. Uh, and I think I also want to make a radar soon. Let's see. Keep on going. Uh, we need more belts, though. Let's go and get belts made. Let's put all of that in there and take again control clicking that box will get you the stuff out of there now one cool thing that you can do is if you let's see if this is aligned yeah this is aligned you can actually press shift click to do a uh a kind of um you know ghost images and that's good for planning so so what we can do here is if you stand on the belt and run on it you run faster it's pretty handy and then, uh, but if you're going backward, it, it slows you down. So that's not ideal. All right. So here we have coal connected. Um, the one place I tend to use burner inserters is here. Oh my gosh. We have not enough uh, iron. Hold on. I need some. Give it back. Okay. I just need, let's see, one for now. Uh, and the reason I use a burner inserter here is so that the kick, the system can kickstart itself. So this thing has its own, it needs fuel. So it's going to grab some fuel. Oh, it doesn't auto load. What? You have to fuel burner miners now? How weird. Okay. Well, anyway, they used to, um, oh, you know what it, you know what it is? It is because... Um, it doesn't need any coal. If we take out the coal here, there it goes. It feeds itself and then it feeds this uh, machine. So we're just going to shove some more in. It's fine. But if you have a pyre, uh, power spiral or an, and an outage and you manage to get your miners going, you might be halfway across the map, like all the way in coal land over here. These things will kind of kickstart themselves and then you get your power back again. So if we look at these, um, one boiler and two steam engines is the correct ratio. Um, and eventually we're going to be going for an array of one water pump, 20 of these, and 40 of these. So you're going to have like 20 in a row of these guys. And that will, that that's basically will use all of the water that a single water pump 
can create. So then you need to, to have another water pump out there. But we don't need it yet. Um, however, we're using half of our available power. You can see the power output and available power. So we're kind of almost at half there. So we need to really start thinking about adding more power because we don't have a lot of machines, but by golly, we, we do, do need more power for this. So happily, our nanobots are almost done. We're just going to keep gathering resources um, until we get to the next stage of the game. But until then, I think it's a good time to end this episode. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to be informed of new videos. It is very, very much appreciated and helps me out a great deal. Remember to check out my KOS and Factorio merch and make your way to our Discord server to chat about the game, share ideas, and play on our community server. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time.